everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Jason. And we are father. And son. Jason, what are we talking about today, man? We're talking about two movies this time. Spawn the movie and Liar Liar with Jim Carrey in it. Two movies that have absolutely nothing to do with each other except... They, um, they both released in 97. Yep, today we're doing movies from 1997. <laughs> And it just kind of worked out this way. This is two movies that I showed Jason over the weekend when my wife and the other kids were out of town. And I was like, I've been wanting to show Jason Spawn. And that's a little bit too violent and rough for the other guys. So uh, I wanted to do that at a time that nobody else was around. And I've also been wanting to show you Liar Liar for a long time. So we just happened to do that. And when we finished Liar Liar, you were like, this is a really weird uh, kind of double feature. These movies don't have anything to do with each other. And then I thought about it a second. I was like, no, they have one thing in common. Yeah. Yeah. The year 1997. Yeah, I I can't think of anything else not, like besides the 1997. Really. Yeah, I mean Jim Carrey's been in a comic book movie, but so is everybody at this point. Yeah. Um. So should we start with Spawn? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Okay. I am so excited to hear you talk about this. I kind of just want to sit back and relax and just <laughs> let you go. Yeah. Spawn, of course, is a thing that I've talked about ad nauseum. I've done two different reviews on this movie. Uh, the, the Rewind is no longer with us, unfortunately, because, uh, yeah, it died. It went to hell. It works for Mabolja now. And that review, I, I was using footage, and it got flagged, and I wasn't able to keep it online. And also, I, like, I haven't just posted an audio version of that, Jason, because... I, I don't like that review. Um, like, like I usually keep all my stuff up, like regardless of what I think about it now. Maybe at some point I'll put that back up so that just so that people have it for the sake of completion. But when I did the review for Spawn Year, I, I did a complete not a one eighty on it as far as my opinion on it. But I said a lot of stupid things in that rewind. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I don't remotely agree with now, and I just got some things like factually wrong as I was reading through Spawn. I was like, oh, I didn't remember this series very well at all. So anyway, I've talked about this movie a ton. Jason, talk a little bit about Spawn. What it, I want to I want to hear your um your breakdown first. I want to hear you try to try to explain what happens in this movie. Um. Well, give us be, a, give well, us a synopsis. What is Spawn <laughs> about? So basically, there's this black guy who is working for the government, I think. And then apparently there were these two guys were that were also like like the big like boss of the government, kind of. Two guys. Well, they were like two people. Oh, okay. And they okay. were bad guys. You're talking about Jason Wynn and Jessica Priest? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. And um, they were bad guys, and so, um, and they wanted him to, like, kill people, I think, and so... Yeah, he, he was a mercenary for hire. He That's what he did for a living. That's what he did for the government. Yeah, and so... And they give him a mission that he refuses to do. He draws a line of, uh-huh. of, of uh, you know, doing, doing horrible things, killing innocent people. So, uh... Jason Wynn blows him up, and he gets a Deadpool face, <laughs> and he goes to hell, and he's, like, wanting... Wonderful, and, wholesome entertainment for 10 year olds. <laughs> and, like, um, there's this Malbolgia dude that wants him to, like, um, be the big guy of his army... Mm-hmm. Like the leader of his army, yep. and then he goes back to Earth, and then there's this c- clown guy that won't shut up, <laughs> and he can turn into this raptor dude um, called Violator, and I like Violator, but I don't like Clown, and... I agree with that. <laughs> um... And Clown's this big fat guy who doesn't like clowns. And, <laughs> and then Jason Wynn, um, well, Spawn wants to get Jason Wynn, and also he wants to get Wanda back. Um, because when he blew up, he was screaming Wanda's name. We get the Wanda yell yeah, from the comics. Yeah, we get the Wanda yeah. yell. And... Um, that was like probably the funny, the uh, funniest 
uh, part of the movie. What, just when he um, goes, Wanda! Yeah. Did you just lose it because you knew about that from Spawn? Yeah, yeah. and also, um, <clears throat> it um, it's funny, like, where that happens in the movie. Like, because I... so early? I figured that, like, they would do that, but... That they would do it later. Did you think it was funny that he did it while he was Simmons? Yeah. He says her name once or twice later. He doesn't do like the one to yell, but he's yeah. he's got that part where uh, he from the comics where he digs up his own body and he's lamenting losing her. And there's a part where he goes Wanda, but he's not. He doesn't do the scream. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I feel like. Um. But yeah, he he. I think. Either him or Jason Wynn is trying to find each other, but I don't remember. Because <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this movie. Well, like... yeah, it's convoluted, but it's not as convoluted as, as the comics, and it's straightforward compared to the comics. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it gave me a... The, the comics gave me a newfound appreciation for that movie because it, by... Uh, necessity it can't be as dragged out as those books are and Spawn is forced to be more proactive he's so passive in the comics he just waits around for things to come to him in the movie he like goes and does things which immediately makes it more compelling and more and more exciting and more engaging <laughs> than the comics oh and we like by watering down by watering down that material it ends up making more sense than it does in the comics because I never know what Malbolge is about and what he wants exactly from Spawn and the, the whole thing is just like him forever messing with Al to eventually get him to do something and in the movie it's it's real clear cut like he wants uh, Spawn to lead his army and not that it makes a lot of sense overall but it still feels like it makes more sense than the comics um you know you find yourself wondering why uh, the rules are the way they are that like you know spawn has to come willingly he has to want to lead the army i i don't i don't know why that is exactly like we don't we don't know we don't know why the rules are the way they are yeah um but yeah um i i like how spawn looks like i i i like the makeup and then i like like what he looks like when he's actually spawn. So you like the um, costume, okay? Yeah, I don't like the cape. But you weren't impressed with the cape. I don't like the cape. Uh, the cape is a like I know it's pretty long. Let me sit in, back a little bit. Like in the comics, it's pretty long, but it's like I feel like it's way too long in the movie. Yeah. Because it looks cool like on a drawing, but when it's like CG, it just doesn't look good like i feel like it needs to be a little bit shorter so you're not questioning the the like over the top like bombastic nature of that in the comics we, we're like the, yeah. the the absurd degree of how huge it is but you do question that on screen is yeah. it just because it doesn't look realistic or is it like like well, in, it in doesn't the, look realistic but is that the reason just in the cg that it doesn't look real enough or or on screen no matter how realistic you could make it look is it just silly to have something that big yeah it's a because I like it, I like seeing it that big in, in live action. I think it I think it looks way better like drawn, like yeah. I mean that's fair. Um, but I never thought it was too absurd because it's a um, it's a creature from hell pretending to be a costume. Like it's you know it has these powers. It's able to do those things. So yeah. it's so like it's not just exaggeration. It's that it physically has the ability to do that. Right. As opposed to, you know, like a 20-mile-long Batman game. <laughs> yeah. Where you which, just suspend your disbelief because which... it looks cool, but with Spawn, like, it's actually able to grow and shrink, and yeah, we're told even in the movie that it has, you know, different properties. But Cagliostro doesn't take the time to teach Spawn how to actually use this cape. It's really funny. There's that moment where it looks like, in the in the training montage, where it looks like he's going to teach him how to use the cape, and then Spawn's like, I don't have time, and he just leaves. It's like, your cape has has its own set of properties. And he's like, no, I'm good. I don't need to know any more about how my powers work. I'm good. <laughs> um, I also feel like it's not rough enough. Like... I watched the R version. Yeah. And there's like like there's there's a bad word here and there, but it is not it is a very soft R. 
Yeah. To me. I agree. Um, I, I, I feel like it, I mean, it's Spawn. So, like, I, like, it, there, there should still be, like, a PG-13 version and an R version, but the R version should be, like, more R than... I mean, the fact that it's that tape is why I was able to show it to you, but it's real mainstreamy and trying to force it into the all-ages kind of accessible mode. And, uh, you know, again, I don't want to say that it's too watered down story-wise because uh, the book is the most convoluted and kind of awful thing I've ever read. Uh, but it, it would be nice. But, like, you can't improve on that material, and I've always wanted to see that. And it would be, and the HBO show did that to some degree. And it would be nice to see something, of course. And McFarlane keeps claiming that he's got a movie coming, and I don't think it will be any better than this. It will just be, I think, darker and rougher and more for adults, but just as, uh, just as nonsensical as his comics are because he's supposedly writing and directing it. I still don't think that movie's ever going to happen at this point. Um, yeah. But what we got is the, like, is is the kind of, like, as, as close as you can make it, the family-friendly version. Yeah. <clears throat> so even for 97, it seems like kind of a soft R. Yeah. Like, go back and watch something else from around that period, like Blade, and you're like, okay, I, I see why that's rated R. Yeah. And of course, the difference is, I showed you the R-rated version of this because that's all you can really get your hands on, I think, and it's pretty tame, and then the, uh, but Blade I would not show you. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll have to wait a bit for that. Unless there's a PG-13 version. No, there's not. Okay. <laughs> um... Oh, yeah, and, um, yeah... I already talked about how Kong won't shut up, and um, it look it looks like they spent all of their money on the opening credits. <laughs> like it it the CG does not look good. Um, it looks like I don't even know if they're CG like with the suit. The suit looks really good. Everything else, the CG does not look very good. Yeah, and the suit's not CG. They just built that. Yeah. And you can always tell when parts of it are, you know, when yeah. you do, like, blades and chains. And we don't do chains very much. No. I thought it was Spawn. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah, he's not going, like, we, we do token moments for that, like, obligatory chain moments. He's mm. got, and, and, then, and then he does weird things, like, he's got the skull in his belt that comes out and bites Jessica Priest's leg. Yeah. They get a little bit silly with the powers. Yeah. Um. I. I really like. I. I really like uh, Jason Wynn. I think he's the, like, absolute best thing. <laughs> he's about the MVP this. of the movie. Yeah. He's uh, hilarious. Yeah. He knows what movie he's in. Yeah. That's why that works. Uh, crazy that they got that you know close of an to, to an A list actor to be in that movie, and I think he just. I think he had uh, like a like a kid or 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 something in his family who uh, really liked Swan, and so that's why he agreed to do that movie. Mm. Um, but yeah, he's insanely over the top and is not pretending like there's anything more going on than he's just a mustache twirling, you know, power hungry madman. Yeah, and it's super fun. But you hated you hated Clown. Every time he was on screen, yeah, you were Clown like, God, shut least, up. Clown is my least favorite character. Um, <laughs> and he makes all the bad jokes and all the, like, um, inappropriate stuff. He, he, said, like, he said a couple things here and there that you laughed at. Yeah, but... Yeah. But not much. Not much. Um, Martin Sheen, that's his name. Uh, now, I've always said that John Leguizamo is one of the best, like, direct from, uh, from comic to screen performances. Uh, I'm with you, like, Clown's obnoxious. He's obnoxious in the comics, too. Like, I also don't like him in the comics. Uh, so, like, he is really authentic, regardless of what I think of or how I feel about that character. Mm. But it's insane the amount of work he put into that. He had to crouch down and, like, walk like this the whole, Wait, the whole really? movie. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, he wore pants that, like, forced him into this crouch. And he 
yeah, it's nuts. He, like, killed himself to do that movie. Wow. I mean, he's a pretty tall, like, actor, right? He's not real short, I don't think. Yeah. You put him next to Bob Hoskins in the Mario movie. Yeah. <laughs> um... And but yeah, he was really committed yeah. to that role. Talking about CG real quick, but Violator still looks okay. Violator looks okay, yeah. But I, I think, I don't know, they must have built some of that. Like, I think some of it's CG and some of it isn't. I guess mm-hmm. I'm not sure, like, how, like, like uh, how much model work was involved. Because yeah. it's inconsistent. There's parts of it that where the textures look a little bit, you know, more real and like they're really there um how did you feel about michael j white in in the in the lead role because he's an actor i like a lot uh have i seen him in anything else? i don't think so okay well i um i like him he's he's a pretty good actor um didn't make much of an impression on you yeah he's kind of just he's a pretty good main character um, I, I like the parts where he breaks character and has a big goofy smile on his face. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, that part where he realizes uh, powers that he didn't know he had and he just goes, damn. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> 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 In that party scene. <laughs> oh, something you might find interesting. This is all stuff I've talked about on the channel before, but something you might find interesting. Jessica Priest, and I wish this had happened. It would have been so much more interesting. That third act is real pieced together, and I don't know if you could tell that, that, that like, it was so, you know, like, like kind of um, ripped apart and cut and cut and pasted uh, with the, with that uh, weird bit where he, where Spawn, like, uses uh, his powers, like, some kind of telekinesis thing to, like, get the, uh, the weapon out of Jason Wynn. Do you remember that? You remember how weirdly shot that in, in cut together that scene was? Um, they hobbled all that together. That wasn't originally what the ending was supposed to be. And so they had to oh. like force an ending just with the footage they had. And it was very strange. But originally Jessica Priest was actually supposed to come back at the end as another spawn. Oh! So they kill her off real early. She dies in the middle of the second act, and yeah. and we see her in an ambulance. Uh, and then at the end, she was supposed to come back and and, uh, and fight Spawn in a big epic, you know, Spawn on Spawn fight. Hmm. Um, the credits are don't look good. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, you were and you were obsessed with the credits with this movie. I have not. Like, I cannot believe. I'm actually saying that the credits don't look good because <laughs> every, like, almost every movie, the credits look good. I can't tell who half of the cast is. Well, and you're also saying that after complaining that it's like all the budget went to the credits? Yeah. But you're saying they have this, uh, like, like really produced credit sequence yeah. over Hellfire and stuff. Yeah. But the words are bouncing but, and they're in a yeah. font that is hard to, to read. Yeah, I, I, I can't tell who who anyone's name is because it gives like bouncing around <laughs> and there there's like doubles of them and stuff and it's so weird yeah like, and then they do it with the ending credits and i literally like scream <laughs> you just couldn't believe you had to watch that again yeah well and also with the ending credits um, and you were also laughing at the music at the beginning. Oh yeah, it's so well, and at and at the end, it's just like the music is so weird. It's just it's hilarious how uh, how much of a commercial product this is, uh, which which might might sound silly because of course it's a commercial product, but I mean, again, this attempt at an all accessible thing because it is it's screaming at you look how edgy it is and it just isn't mm-hmm. um like i don't think you ever had a moment where you were like oh wow this is like rough and dark and i'm not supposed to be watching this because that's what was cool in the 90s about spawn if your parents let you watch it or or if your parents or rather if your parents let you look at the comics or watch the hbo show or you know if you 
like snuck a comic when your parents weren't looking because you weren't supposed to be look, reading that. Where it's like, oh man, look at look at this! Like it's all adult and cool and uh, and, and edgy and hardcore, and I'm not supposed to be looking at this. I don't think you ever got that feeling watching that. No, I didn't because it's not like it's not edgy, but it thinks it's edgy, and it's. It's it's really not like. Of course, I never like edgy just for the sake of itself, but something yeah. that's actually like pushing envelopes and uh, you know g- going to, to to places that you don't expect, uh, and and that you know might be might be dodgy that people uh, uh, might be a little bit like freaked out or scared to see. You know, obviously can be really cool, especially if you have a good story to tell. Um, but well, like... kind of has to be edgy because it's Spawn. Yeah. And you did have that feeling, I think, uh, or at least it looked like it when I was watching it with you, watching something like, say, Terminator 2 or Robocom. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it, it, like, something like that is, and Terminator 2 is, like, 91, right? Yeah. And this is 97? 91, 92, yeah. And Terminator 2 looks actually better Well, and it, to be fair, it, it had more of a budget, certainly. Uh, but there were some major visual effects artists on this movie. What's weird is, this is one of those movies that just doesn't hold up well, but I remember looking better at the time. I didn't see this in the theater. I, I saw it uh, on video a little bit later. And I remember thinking even at the time that some of the CG was dodgy, but I remember really liking what hell looks like and thinking that it was a, a really, uh, like, imaginative, uh, kind of, you know, fresh take on hell. I don't know what I was thinking. Like, looking at it now, and maybe it's just because I've seen other cool hells since then, but... Uh, it, it looks real, um, it, 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 it looks kind of dime a dozen to me now, um, you know, mm-hmm. compared to something like Constantine or, and again, it's not fair cause it's late cause that's later, but yeah, but even at the time, I'm not sure why I was so impressed with that. And I'm not the only one that had that. Roger Ebert also commented on that. It was like the only positive thing he had to say about that movie. He was like, well, it has a really cool vision, vision of hell. And then you had, um, you, you had Cisco on the other side going, what are you talking about? And I was with him back then. Now I'm going back and looking. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what I, I don't know what I was talking about or what Ebert was talking about. It's really funny. You like the part at the end where uh, Spawn, just just a rogue agent of hell, goes into hell through a fireplace. I don't know how that whole thing works. It's just because it's fire. Uh, they're able to open a doorway to hell through fire. Okay. Uh, I don't know. There was there was something real like Lion Witch in the Wardrobe about that. But you're you're yeah. you're, you're able to go through the fire, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, he's like, "No, Malbolgia, I will never lead your army." And then he just shoots all the spawns with his with his green necroplasmic vision or whatever. Yeah, I always remember that killing all the spawns. It killed some of them, and I guess it was just enough of a distraction to let him jump back out of hell. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. That yeah, I I never really thought about that. I mean, it, it is weird. I'm not really sure why that scene ends. The more I'm thinking about it, what is stopping Malbolgia from just sending more minions after him and bringing him back down again? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like that scene is not finished. They had to cobble something together. Yeah. Um, so is there, is there anything else, um, that we should talk about this movie? I mean, we, <laughs> we could talk, we talk, you know, silly convoluted plot stuff and, and, you know, all day long. I've done reviews on this. I've already, I've already talked about this. Yeah. But... I, I mean, I, I've kind of talked about, like, mostly all I can, like, remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's been a few days since we it's, watched it's that. It's been a few days, and I... And I, I, I'm a kid. I have a short memory. Did you feel like it needed a kid and a dog? <laughs> um, I mean, I liked that kid. Yeah. Yeah, and and I liked that um, Spawn has a dog. I think that was like probably. Um, I I actually forgot about that, but yeah, that's like one of the funniest parts, cause he he's got a dog, and but he's Spawn. <laughs> 
I just feel yeah, like, like I guess just to make it uh just to give it more of a family component and to you know soften the brutality there's not a lot of uh you commented in, in some places that it felt like it was trying to be Mortal Kombat yeah um it it was yeah it's really funny how much this movie's not sticking with you I wish we I, I wish we got a shot like a day after we watched it yeah because while you were watching it, you just kept saying, like, this is terrible, yeah. but I like it. Well, yeah, and it's probably um, one of the, like, best bad movies ever. Do you think? I think. You think it's watchable? I think it's watchable. Um, but, I mean, I said that about BVS. So. Yeah. But would you rather watch this or BVS? This, definitely. Is that just because it's shorter? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> It's shorter. I mean, it moves at more of a clip. There's more action in it more often. And, um, it's, and it, it, some of it actually makes sense. Um, and. Yeah, it, you mean there's more of a natural progression of scenes? There's one character think, that does some stupid things. I think it's hilarious comparing this to BBS. Yeah, it doesn't really work because this is at least not a movie with any pretense of brilliance yeah so that's good i don't mean to take everything back to bbs but that was jason that was jason's fault that was, that was my fault <laughs> um you, you remember the part where clown uh attacks spawn in the middle of the street just to th get a gratuitous chase scene in there and he is driving a big truck and Spawn is, if memory serves, on his way to kill Jason Wynn, which is what Malbolgia wants him to do, but Clown gets in his way for no reason? Yeah. He's like, oh, I just gotta I got make it a little harder for him. Why? Like, yeah. the whole thing is a manipulation to get half of the planet killed so that hell's got more souls i guess is the like 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 the whole thing is a master manipulation plot where and, and again still makes more sense than the master manipulation plot in spawn either of the big ones that i read because when you get to maman it's 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 nuts when you get to uh little old or not little lady god that's earlier but when you get to uh like like child god and in and, and child satan um but but the twins but anyway um there's crazy things. The crazy things in that book. Um, but this thing is supposed to be uh, like like hell manipulating Jason Wynn to kill Al Simmons so that they have a uh, general for their army. Because he's supposed to be like the best killer that ever lived, even though he's still... Like, he's not, he's not totally gone he still has a code of ethics at least of some kind like he he has a line he won't cross he has compassion he he does he does care about people so even if he's like the best killer that ever lived i don't know why they wouldn't want like a, a nut job serial killer or something uh, unless they need somebody more stable to actually leave the army but there's not any there's not any talk about that um it, that still is another thing that makes more sense in the movie than it does in in the book because in the book it's just generically he is a uh he's a mercenary he's a hired killer uh he's He's killed a lot of people. He would probably be good for this. In the movie, they at least have a, a clear cut, um, like like a defining trait where they go, he has killed more people than anybody in the history of the world, and that's why we picked him. So like that's at least an explanation. You know yeah. what I mean? Like like that that at least um, I I would think like where his heart is would matter more. Or would, would at least, you know, rank would, would make a difference. But at least he's got a resume in, in a way he does it in, in the book. So that's good. But, like, they want to... They, they want him to die so that he can uh, lead their army. And then they want... Uh, and, and then Clown manipulates Jason Wynn to have a failsafe uh, pretending like it's for his own protection... So that if something happens to him, and he, like, it should be so obvious to him what's going on. And Clown is basically snickering behind his back, and he's an idiot, and he doesn't notice it, because he's a one-dimensional, like, you know, Saturday morning cartoon villain. And he 
and if he dies, then there's this, uh, like, biological weapon that goes off and kills, like, half the world or something. Yeah. It, so, like, it, it's so weird because, like... I was just trying to refresh your memory because at the beginning you couldn't remember, like, who was after whom and what was going on. Yeah. So, um, so it, it's kind of weird because, like, the, um, like, it makes sense comparing it to the comics but it makes no sense at all like so i that's how bad the comics that probably means that the comics like make like zero sense at all zero sense (laughs) yeah um do you want to move to liar liar absolutely okay um so i I, I I don't like Jim Carrey in this movie as much as other movies that he's in. Yeah. But that's probably the only thing that I don't like about this movie. Oh, okay. Is, that's really funny. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about this Jim Carrey star vehicle <laughs> is Jim Carrey. <laughs> Gonna back up a bit. Which, I, I mean, I You're like... You're like a floating disembodied head right uh, now. Okay. Well, I li- like I like Jim Carrey, but not as much as like, like Jim the Carrey mask and... in The Mask or um, Bruce Almighty or yeah. Yeah, so you've seen him in a, f- in a fair number of things at this point. Yeah, I've seen him in like five movies. Now. Four or five movies. Four yeah. or five, yeah. Because of course you've seen Batman Forever. I've seen Batman Forever. I've seen Sonic. Oh, that's true. Uh. So for yeah, so yeah, probably five. Five and mask. Liar, liar. And I've seen Bruce Almighty. half of um that one where he's trying to like kill himself or something. What? What? He's not trying to kill himself. I don't know what I. It's either it, it's been a really long time since I saw it, but he's either trying to like kill himself or he's trying to save someone. Like someone was going to die. Like he was like on top of this like. Oh, cable guy. Yeah, cable, cable guy. Yeah, cable guy. Cable guy. There you go. Yeah, I've seen like half of that movie. I forgot that you were in the room when we but... were watching that. Yeah, and then that's borderline. I'm not even sure you should watch that movie. And and then uh, wait, wow, I didn't think you were anywhere around when we were watching that. That's funny. Yeah, and I don't even remember anything about that though. Yeah, so. maybe he was like sneaking around, like like through a cor- like like around a corner, like ooh, I'm gonna watch this movie I'm not supposed to watch. Um, no, I was like on the couch. That's funny. Yeah, maybe your maybe your mom was fine. But I don't I don't remember. But anyway, uh, and then I think you've seen Truman Show. Maybe Mm-mm. have you not? Nope. Oh, you oh, you like that movie? We should watch that at some point. We should do that on the show. That'd be fun. Yeah. So why don't you give us a real quick breakdown, like you did with Spawn, on Liar Liar? What is Liar Liar about? It's about this um, lawyer, mm-hmm. and his name's not coming to me. Because I Fletcher? just know him as Jim Carrey. Fletcher? Yeah, Fletcher. Um, which, I don't really like that name, but... Um, uh, so, Fletcher, um, the lawyer guy... Um, it doesn't has, really fit Jim Carrey, does it? No. And he he has a son, and but he's, like, never able to, like, play with him. Um, he has a five-year-old son that kind of acts like he's nine. Yeah. <laughs> And um, he can never play with him because he keeps having, like, stuff that he has to do. Um, when he's prioritizing work over his son. Yeah. Like, it's not just that he's got other responsibilities that he has to do. It's that something will come up and he could choose to go be with his son, but he chooses to stay at work. Yeah. And sometimes not just for work. Sometimes for, like, office flings with women and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, he's weird. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But basically, um, it's. Now I'm thinking this might not have been any less appropriate than uh, Cable Guy, but yeah, guys. <laughs> it's his. Um, it's his son's birthday. It's Max's birthday, and um, he can't be there again. He was going to, and then he decided not to be there. Um, well, he he couldn't be there, and um, so uh, Max. Uh, for his uh, birthday wish, he says uh, he wants um, Fletcher to uh, never lie for a whole day. Mm-hmm. So um, basically, that gets him in trouble because he's a lawyer, and lawyers should like lie and stuff. And also, like people, like are kind of 
supposed to light or is it's funny that's what you're getting what jail? you're getting from that because there are certainly um i would argue like plenty of lawyers that have ethics and you know don't just lie as a matter of course yeah but uh, he is a you know he's not real above board and he's he's a lawyer that banks on his ability to lie and people come to him because he's willing to um, you know, do the unethical thing. And uh, to the movie's credit, there are other lawyers in the movie that uh, he that are passed over for him because they actually have integrity and they won't do the shady stuff that he does. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that basically gets him in trouble and he, like, ends up going to jail at one point and, yeah. <laughs> and he's, um banging himself in the toilet and yeah it's very strange <laughs> um he starts like hitting himself uh with certain things in the bathroom mm -hmm. and it's, <laughs> it's really weird um okay so yeah that's basically so, <laughs> so this is so this is of course a comedy and comedies live and die on your comedic sensibilities mm -hmm. unless you just find the story itself so compelling that even if you don't find it funny you can look past some of the humor so the the big you know a uh, hundred thousand dollar question jason is did you think this movie was funny um yeah because i didn't i have the same thing with with this uh with you uh, as i did with the mask where i was surprised that you seem to sort of be enjoying it, but simultaneously you never had any, like, laugh-out-loud moments? Yeah. You never laughed watching The Mask, but when we talked about that for the show, you, you seemed to really like it. Yeah. So did you have the same thing with Liar Liar, or was the, 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 the whole experience more of a disappointment? Um, well, the, the, those movies, the, these movies, um, like The Mask and Liar Liar, um, are funny, but they're not like laugh out loud funny. Interesting. They're like, um, oh, I sure thought they were when I was a kid. Yeah, they they're kind of just like comedic, you know, like um, but but they're not like with a mask. They don't make jokes. Like nothing is really funny. Yeah, um, unless you think Tex Avery cartoons are laugh out loud funny in the first place. Yeah, and which... a lot of that is like homage to things you might have seen before, so you might not be laughing so much as going, "Oh, that's clever," or "That looks cool," or yeah, or that's his character, like that's what his like that character does in the film. Yeah, that's just his nature, like. Yeah, so you're suspending your disbelief, and it doesn't matter if you're laughing or not. If, again, if you're engaged in the story, well, that's what the mask does. He's yeah. he's. I don't mean to go back to that movie, um, too much, but he he's this guy who's uh like like reining in his um uh you know his his feelings and he, he like lets everything out when he becomes the mask and so he's gonna do all those wacky things even if you don't think they're funny yeah um getting past his inhibitions uh so so you think jim carrey was better in that movie than he is in this mm -hmm. uh this has a lot of slapstick and like the mask has a lot of like visual gags too, but this is like straight up slapstick stuff, uh, like 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 what you were talking about in the bathroom, like like a lot of you know physical pratfall humor. Yeah. Uh, what did you think? You, even though you weren't like like uh, like actually um, you know laughing audibly, what did you think was the funniest scene? Um, I actually don't know. Because when I was a kid, it was it was the pen. When I was a kid, it was yeah. royal blue. It, the pen is royal blue. Yeah. Um. It's either that, that or that scene. I think still holds up yeah. comedically. Like that's still really funny. And in a vacuum, that's funny. If you yeah. just watched that scene and you knew the basic premise of Liar Liar, that's really funny. Yeah. Um. My. I mean, it's either it's either that or the bathroom scene. Yeah. Because yeah. It's like, I'm kicking my ass. Like, that's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I my my favorite character is Max. Mm -hmm. Um, I I really like him. Um, I I think I think I think the whole like plot is pretty good. Like, um, that's probably my favorite part about the movie. So, do you like the, the conceit? Plot, like... Were you okay with? 
in this universe, a kid can make a wish and, like, literally change something, and we don't need any, like, background or, like, like real honest God explanation for it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm fine with that if it, if it, if you really need it for the story, for, mm-hmm. like, what you're doing, then it works. But like, you didn't mind not getting any kind of explanation for it? No. Because that was the thing I always really appreciated about that movie, is they don't get bogged down with mythology or rules or anything. I mean, yeah. it's real clear cut. It's we, we, we understand what the rule is. He's For 24 hours, he can't lie. That's it. And it's just powers that be something, something lets this kid have his wish so that uh, this guy can turn his life around. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it doesn't go... It, it, not going as far as Bruce Almighty, you kind of get the feeling that this sort of thing... It looks key enough that this sort of thing could be happening all over the place. And people might not necessarily know about it. Whereas, with, with it's a little bit harder to swallow with Bruce Almighty because uh, he gets the power of God... Yeah. And he makes all these crazy changes that people would have to remember. Because I don't think anybody's memories get wiped by the, by the end of that movie. And there's some, you know, really insane, impossible things that people see. Yeah. And in this, there's not... To, to anybody else on the outside end, there's not any uh, real supernatural component. Like, there is a supernatural component. But he could just be a crazy person who, for a day, thinks he can't lie. Like, there's, there's no... Um, there's no extraordinary... Uh, like superpower involved like there is with, with Bruce Almighty it's, it's not like the laws of physics have changed or something yeah um so my least favorite character is Jerry um I feel like he just like I know he's not I know we like we need him for the story but we don't need him for the story yeah but he just doesn't get that much to do are you talking about the the guy who's um, about to get married to his yeah. wife, to his ex-wife? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a plot device kind of character. And that character's yeah. always hard to write. Yeah. I've been talking about this a lot lately. It is becoming almost more of a cliche to have the reasonable, understanding boyfriend character in, like, as opposed to a love triangle. I see this a lot these days where you'll have a character like that. I'm trying to think of an example. There's there's a, there's a couple things recently that have done this again where you'll have the, like, reasonable boyfriend character. Oh, yeah, for something like Ant-Man, right? Where, where you have you have the guy uh, in Ant-Man that his that Scott's ex-wife is dating um, when he, or is, or is she married already? I don't remember. Um, when he goes to prison, and then when he gets out, uh, they don't like each other, but then he saves his kid... Uh, who the, the the new guy you know legitimately cares about, and then by the end they're kind of friends. And then in the second movie, um, they're they're quite friendly. And I think that's become more of the stereotype now. Yeah. Well, and and but Venom I, does that. And Venom does that. Ven- yeah, Venom good call. Does that, yeah. And I th- yeah, that's the other one I was trying to think of. And I, I hear people all the time like praise movies for that, where they're like, well, at least they got around the stereotype of the love triangle and the, 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 the like really sucky boyfriend that the main character doesn't like. And I'm like, I don't know that we do that as often now. Yeah. It seems like we do this now more. And Liar Liar did it earlier than uh, some other things because uh, at the time, there was there, I think there was a lot more of the uh, you know obnoxious boyfriend guy that you're like, why is she with him? He's yeah. just rebound guy. Yeah. And this guy also is sort of the rebound guy. Um, but he is, but again, he's reasonable. He's just kind of a generic and yeah, he, a he, he's generic. Yeah, but he's supposed to be like that's that's kind of the idea of that character. Yeah, but you're right. It's kind of the reason he feels so plot devicey is it's hard to. And I realize that this is uh, an exaggerated comedy, but. I think some characters are more realistic than this, so it, it makes it hard to swallow that there'd be a person like that that was just that <laughs> nothing. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't know. It, like, like th- there's just nothing to that guy. Yeah. That, and that that's why, like, that's why he's my least favorite character. There's not really any other characters that are just terrible. Like... Maybe like one of the like extras. Or well, like... <laughs> the 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 woman that he's defending in the civil, uh, in the civil case is awful, but she's supposed to be. She's supposed so to be. That, and... That's that character. Yeah. 
Um, but it's a fun situation. I, I, I've wanted to show you that for a long time because I know you like yeah. Bruce Almighty. And Bruce Almighty, as I've always said, is, is uh, that movie again, but with a different conceit. Yeah. And this is the first of the Liar Liar trilogy, which which rounds out with Yes Man, which <laughs> is uh, this that the same movie yet again, except with no supernatural conceit, where that's that's as if uh, in this movie instead of not being able to lie, he just decided not to for a day because that's what he does in Yes Man. He just says oh, yes. Really? He just says yes to everything. Oh. Yeah, and there's no conceit. It's not, or at least there's no supernatural conceit. So it's not like it's not like there's a there's a you know rule from the cosmos that says you have to say yes to everything. He just chooses to do that. Mm. After going to a seminar led by Terrence Stamp, so General Zod tells him to say yes to everything, and then he does. It's great. Um, it's the weakest of the three, I think. But yeah, I need to see Bruce Almighty again. It's been a long time. I. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, I I know um I know like what happens. I know that he has like the powers of God. You remember the part where he parts and, soup? Um, I remember the part where papers fly everywhere. Okay. But um, I also remember the part where. Do you remember the part where he brings the moon closer to Earth? Uh huh. That happens. And I remember um. He makes he meets a black guy, in the um, in like a. Uh, you mean Morgan lot? Freeman, who's yeah. God? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Morgan Freeman is God. <laughs> oh, because who else would you cast as God? It's fantastic. <laughs> Morgan Freeman is the because because this is this is a stereotype in movies. Morgan Freeman is the quintessential magical black man, and you have to you have to cast the quintessential uh, uh, magical black man as God. It's fantastic. <laughs> He's amazing in that. Yeah. Yeah, I love in that, in that movie. Do you remember that he's married to Rachel from Friends? Wait, really? Yeah, that's who his girlfriend is in that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll watch that again at some we'll point. We'll watch that again. And we might maybe do we a could, father and son. Maybe we could do a Jim Carrey show where we could do uh, that and Truman Show and maybe like one other thing. Yes, man be cool to do a trilogy we could do yes man um i don't know i don't know uh, what what you'd what you'd think of that um i'd love to show you man on the moon but i think there's a couple things in that that uh, are a little bit too adult or vulgar or something mm, okay. um for you to see and it'd be kind of weird uh having you talk about andy kaufman but what's andy might be amusing kaufman <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you about that who later. is who is that he was a famous comedian from the eighties who was like a real unorthodox, or like I guess I guess seventies in the eighties who was a real like unorthodox um, comedian where he 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 uh, his comedy was all about trolling people. Oh, I like trolling people. So he <laughs> so he'd do things like it was supposed to be funny that he would just uh, you'd think he was going to tell jokes, but instead he would uh, like just read a classic novel for five hours. <laughs> Like, that's the kind of thing that he would do. I'll show you a couple clips of Andy Kaufman. Okay. I'll show you his uh, Saturday Night Live debut. Okay. Which is one of the big famous things with him, the Mighty Mouse thing. Mm. But anyway, well, thanks a lot for watching, folks. Uh, okay. That was today. Is there anything else you want to say about Lair Lair? No. <laughs> that, was, really. that was today's father and son. We will be back again with another one real soon. And uh, we've got some movies and some more TV shows that we're planning on talking for you or talking about for you that we're excited to do in the not too distant future. Uh, we got some cool plans, so we're not gonna reveal anything yet, but uh, look forward to it. We got a couple of really cool, really cool ideas that we're gonna do real soon. And in the meantime, I'm Captain Logan. And I was Jason. <laughs> Later, folks.